direct from the web, it's Billy Masters Live. And now, please welcome your host, Billy Masters. Are we? There we are. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Billy Masters Live. Of course, I am Billy Masters, and today is, hit it, Thursday, April 30th, because, again, every day feels like Sunday when you're quarantining. And today, I have, you know, I, you know I say this every single show. Every show I say I have only had on people I like, and these are two people I like an awful lot. And um, I'm going to eventually have to have somebody on that I don't like. And then I'm going to have to stop saying that. I got a call yesterday asking if I want, I don't want to say who it is because I might end up booking him. It is a him. And it is somebody who is a behind the scenes person, but somebody that everyone knows and kind of doesn't like and kind of uh, gossips about. And I thought, oh, my God, he'd be kind of fun if he would actually say something to me. And then I thought, oh, I won't be able to say I only have people on I like because I don't really like him. Anyway, but let me tell you a story about somebody that I really do like. And, of course, that is Miss Ross. Diane, because, you know, I like to call her Diane just because I know it annoys her. Diane. And um, I have been a Ross fan, a Supremes fan, probably more of a Supremes fan than a Ross fan, since I was a nitty bitty little gay boy. And one of my best friends had got me a poster when I was young of the Supremes, had given me lots of unreleased things. Then I became very close with the author of Call Her Miss Ross, J. Randy Tarabarelli. And one of the thrills of my life and I really do mean thrills of my life. Now, let me see if it's here. You know, I keep saying things are here, and then I don't know if they're here. There it is. Okay. One of the thrills of my life was going to the opening night of the Return to Love tour. It was very close to the closing night of the Return to Love tour. And so I was with Randy Tarabarelli, and we are there in the front row. And the man who Diane often credits as ruining her reputation, was there in the front row. And one of the most surreal things happened. She came down because, you know, how she likes to come out and reach out and touch somebody's hand. And she comes out and she walks right over to Randy. Now, I don't know if she was coming over out of fond remembrance. I don't know if she came over to extend an olive branch. I don't know if she came over because she's blind as a bat. Miss Ross came over, put her hand on his cheek, and like sort of cheek kissed him. Amazing. Then, at the very last concert of the Return to Love tour, I ran into my first guest. So, the last concert was in Madison Square Garden, and the press were assembled backstage, and we were brought into like a freight elevator in back at Madison Square Garden. And I see this guy, you know, uh, he I kept thinking he looks familiar, extremely slim. And I'm like, I know him. Who is he? He didn't say anything to me. I didn't say anything to him. And when I got home that night, I realized that was Michael Musto. And I immediately said to him an email and went, girl, you look fabulous. I don't know what you've done, but you're like a waif. And he did. He looked unbelievable. And I will say this for the Billy Masters of the world, for anyone else who does this, we owe a debt of gratitude to Michael Musto and the Rex Reeds and the Rona Barretts. You know, I don't go back to Hedy, uh, Hedda and Luella. But Michael Musto was really one of my idols. And growing up in Boston, we got the Village Voice, and I would get it just to read Michael's column to see what was happening in New York, which was like a wonderland for me. And uh, the fact that I've become friends with him and I'm having him on the show is a little surreal. So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Michael Musto. Hey, Michael. Hey, Billy. Well, I've gone from waif to wafers, and this is now 200 pounds later. Yeah, but no, you look great. You really, because you had gotten really big at one point. You look fine. I'm happy to be alive, honestly. 
<laughs> no. But what made you lose the weight when you lost it? I looked in the mirror. Oh, really? I mean, was it just that? I, I even went up to Christina Ricci once and I said, you've lost weight. I like the fact that you were kind of a quirky ingenue who didn't care. And she said, well, you've lost weight too. And I was like, she just nailed me. I'm a hypocrite, <laughs> I'm a hypocrite at this point. I don't know. I feel with all this uh, home quarantining, I'm gaining weight again. And uh, yeah, me too. that's the least of the problems with this current crisis. The main problem is I'm a social writer and there's no more social out there. It yeah, so what out. do you do? You have stuff. You are you still churning out a column in this time? Writing, yeah. But uh, if you leave the house, uh, it's like a zombie movie. People act like ah! <laughs> humans are the enemy, and of course we're all masked up. We're not Mike Pence. We did get the memo. Yes, exactly. I would say we did. Um, what are you writing about during this time? Because it's just, are you sticking to what you typically write about? Or are you really going beyond, you know, sort of nationally? Because this is, we're not, we're going to come out of this so different. It's hard to write about what I used to write about. I used to write about events. There are no sure. events. If you write about a Zoom conversation, that's pretty boring. <laughs> but uh, at first I wrote things about like celebrity reaction to the crisis. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote things about even home workouts. And then I realized when 9-11 happened, I just kept writing my column because 9-11 was substantially covered by the media. It's not like nobody was addressing it. I've always provided sort of a respite from the dark side of the world. And so I figured, let me just keep writing columns. Sometimes you have to come up with high concept columns. I just did like 20 oldest trans icons in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, number one was Jan Morris, who's in her 90s. She's the famous trans. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so I'm just coming up with the concept, pulling them out of my butt, uh, just to keep in the game. But obviously, you can't write about get-togethers because there aren't any get-togethers. Yeah, I realized the first column I wrote when the stay-at-shelter-in-place order went, came up, the half of the column was about events that were canceled, and then the other half was about people who had become positive. And I went, what is this column all of a sudden? And... I kind of did the same thing. I looked ahead and realized if I'm not normal, people are not reading me to see who died last week. They're reading me to laugh. And it becomes it becomes harder because we have to rely on our style to just make people laugh. Well, I did write obits about people that I knew that had died of the COVID. For example, Nisham Wooden, who was the drag star Mona Foote. Sure. A very beloved figure in New York. And of course, Terrence McNally, the noted playwright. But yeah, other than that, it becomes a little macabre to just keep uh, writing about it. Here's a list of celebrities with COVID. And, <laughs> and as far as the cancellations, what could be more boring than people writing about, guess what else was canceled? Let's just do one article saying everything <laughs> is canceled. Everything. Yeah, we know that there's going to not be a Burning Man, a Tony Awards. That there, <laughs> there ain't nothing happening. Thank the Lord for my movie club on Zoom. I, I've had a movie club for many years where we watch good, bad, old movies together. Oh, I didn't know that. What did you watch this week? Uh, last night we watched Chain for Life with the Hilton Sisters. I'm not talking about uh, Paris and Not Hilton. higher. I'm talking about the original conjoined twins, Violet and Daisy, yes. who were the subject of the musical many years later. Sideshow. I'm Daisy, I'm Violet. Oh, you know. loved it. A, a, a great... By the way, people who are sitting home and looking for things to watch or listen to, seek out the original Broadway cast album of Sideshow because it's really an extraordinary show. Alice Ripley, who's a Facebook friend of mine, and Emily Skinner were the original stars. Um, a few years ago, they revised it. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was a good production. Um, and uh, speaking of Diana Ross, in the 80s, yes. I had a band called M Michael Musto and the Must because I worship... Diane, yes, I will. Diane, we do it. I know. Oh, yeah. oh Diane. And <laughs> <laughs> I was the sort of white gay male Diana Ross, sort of like Michael Jackson, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found this photo. Female, I'm not sure. I found this photo, and now you tell me about this. Oh, yes. Well, now, what is that? Okay. In the 80s, Diana was appearing at Radio City. She had a string of concerts there. And they had a party on the USS Intrepid, which is a docked boat on the west mm -hmm. side. It was a gala party, the height of 80s, you know, luxury and fabulousness. Diana was like two feet away from me. And I'm like, how am I going to get the nerve to go up and say hello to my idol? And she came up to me. She did a like a Randy Tarbarelli kind of thing. Came up, <laughs> hi, I'm Diana Ross. And I, said, <laughs> I know. And we actually had a lovely chat. Uh, talking about her new song, which was going to be Missing You, her song about Marvin Gaye. 
And uh, it was photographed there by Ben Buchanan for Details Magazine. It became the lead photo in Stephen Sabin's uh, column, the next issue. And it's a great photo for you to have had. Well, I look like I'm exploding out of my skin. My face is blowing up from excitement. I couldn't believe it. But yeah, isn't that what you would want? I mean, that captures the moment. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? The book had come out where she was supposed to be a horrible, evil witch. She wasn't to me, maybe because I'm press. Uh, right. But she isn't always a horrible witch. And I think Randy Tarbelli had liked her before he decided to write a hatchet job. And he still loves her. I mean, he will be the first to tell you, I love her, but I had to write a book. But, there, you know, it's funny. I sat down with him. He revised the book maybe 10 years ago. And he went back and revisited it. And he'd call me up and read a section and say, God, I was such an arrogant little bitch. But go. now I wouldn't write it that way. And I think, you know, with age comes a little bit of reflection. Well, he should send her a huge apology. Well, <laughs> that ain't but, well, I think, you know, it was the one-two punch of his book and Mary's book just within the year that that was it. Well, um, last, year, last year, Diana gave a concert at a New York hotel in Times Square, the edition, and mm -hmm. a drag queen, drunken old drag queen named Princess Diana, who always does Diana, was in the front poking Diana. And, oh, I remember there's a video of yeah. Yeah, and she was dragged out by security. And Diana even took the high road of that of that and said uh it was a loving moment, it was a reach out and touch moment. <laughs> Diana's I, all about love at this point. She really is just pure love. She's well, the couple of songs. I remember maybe ooh, I don't know, five, eight years ago, I think it was a Golden Globes. And um I, all of a sudden she wandered in in Hollywood. A lot of people, if they're at an award show, they'll show up at a party just to walk the press line and then walk right out. And she did that. It was a hit and run. And I saw her walking out and I said, okay, I've got to go in because when are you going to have the chance? And I went over to her in her face and said, excuse me, Diane, I love you. Could I take a photo with you? And they said, okay. I looked her in the eyes. I spoke without being spoken to first. And I called her Diane. And you didn't miss Ross. You did not. You know, went right, and I went right for Diane. You're and brave. She, I you are know. a brave homosexual. And so she uh, looked up and went, sure. And there we are. Now she is clutching her purse to her bosom because I think she might have thought I was after the clutch. But, uh, yeah. but she, I had a lovely experience with her too. Um, and one thing I love about Diane is even now, I bet on Zoom, she's probably wearing sequins and glitter. <laughs> Whereas Meryl Streep is in a row with minimal makeup. I, I do and love- And the hair everywhere. Yeah, I, I love the new, some of the changing values because of this crisis are interesting. Like the way celebrities have dropped all vanity. Madonna mm -hmm. kind of laying in a bathtub with rose petals and it's just kind of, <laughs> this is me. But I do miss the artifice, the glamour, and the production values. I can't wait for that to come back. Yeah, it's interesting. With all of this starting, um, when I was kind of goaded into starting this show, and it was, and I every once in a while, now see, I should put up the banner for them. Every once in a while, I should say, oh, I don't know. Yes. So the Actors Fund and Broadway Cares are charities of choice. Um, and it was Seth Rudetsky and his husband who were doing two shows a day. God help me if I had to do two a day. I'm exhausted doing two a week. But Seth said, you really, if you're just sitting home with nothing to do, you owe it to the fans to give them content, to keep them entertained. And so I figured it out as I went along and you want everything perfect. And then you look at what's coming out and say, nobody's perfect, just get it out there. Well, half the people on Facebook doing live streaming are doing it to entertain, to keep doing what they're doing. And That's put what it we up. do. But you know what the other motivation is? They're going crazy without an audience. These people are used to playing to, even if it's just 10 people and they're all guest lists, they're used to having some admiration. So this is their way of saying, hey, look at me, folks. And that's fine. This is what we do. We're all ego whores. Well, that's their job. And, you know, it's, it's funny when I call people and ask them to be on the show and they say, well, let me get back to you. And I go, what else are you doing? Well, that's why everyone's getting these amazing guests. Like you call Greta Garbo. She's like, yes, I'm available. You know, yeah. everyone is bored. And my goal is really to become, uh, really to look like Bernadette Peters. Because to me, she looks like a porcelain bowl. Always. You could serve salad off of her. <laughs> She's amazing. And I want to be an ageless. She can be a vampire. I, I want to be Patty LaPone. <laughs> and have no, a like that and have opinions like that. Yeah. 
Well, it's funny because they all have stuck to their wheelhouse. And obviously you saw the Sondheim concert. What did you think? I kind of skimmed through it after the fact. I didn't have to get through the one hour delay. <laughs> I totally get it. There are technical glitches nowadays. I wasn't entranced by the ladies who lunch thing. No, I I thought it was an odd combination. I'm not sure it was a combination that worked. Yeah, and you just hear Stritch no matter who does that song. Though I'm looking forward to eventually seeing Patty's version in company. Right. Oh, uh, if we ever get to. I love how Audra ended by saying, ah, I messed up, I screwed up. It's like, Audra screwing up is like not screwing up, basically. She doesn't miss a note. Well, you mentioned Streep. You know, Streep just kind of went for it. Yeah. No, I mean, good for them for trying to do a different version. They were drinking up a storm. That's the way to do it. And the whole thing was a very loving tribute to the greatest songwriter in the history of, of musical theater. Was that your highlight from the concert? Do you remember saying anybody else that you said, wow? Bernadette, a cappella? Um, I would have played piano for her. I don't know what the problem was. Uh, yeah. I, I, I always loved Linda Lavin. I loved her doing uh, The Boy from da 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 da, da. It's like a, a spoof right. boy from Ipanema. Right. And uh, I don't remember any other highlights. I, I just kind of glaze over because I used to go to these things in person. <laughs> Sure, of course. It's special, and now everyone in the world. Oh, did you see Meryl Streep? It's like it's lost its specialness. But I know the idea was to raise money, and that it did. Well, there's so many people who are raising money. Um, I love. I do have to say, I enjoy what Seth and James are doing for the Actors Fund because we are seeing some interesting guests and readings of plays, which I think has been fun. And other little theater companies, when they can get around the unions, are doing it. So. I mean, the scary thing about this new adaptability to the internet is I think movie theaters are now cemented as having become obsolete because as you sh I'm sure you know, Universal, after the huge success online of Trolls World Tour, mm -hmm. they've decided from now on, we're gonna show all our movies online and in theaters both. And, um, you know, AMC theaters said, no go, That's we're never gonna show your movies in result of this because you're breaking our deal. A I think- first look, right? Yeah, and I think, Yay for the theaters for being noble and standing up for their rights, but I think ultimately they're going to lose, and the studios are going to say, "Oh, screw it, we'll do a Netflix. We're just going to open everything online, and people are never going to leave the house, and they're never going to have to buy twenty dollars popcorn." But they're also going to miss out on the communal experience of seeing a movie the way it should be seen, and it should be on a big screen, and with an audience reacting with you, which I think yeah, is what really the question alone. The fun of seeing a comedy is a group laughter or groaning or whatever the reaction or a horror movie or everything. Like, ah. Yeah, the one thing that I don't think has been working is when I see like the late shows or comedians trying to do stand up in a vacuum. And I know that if you don't have that audience, it, the timing is just off and it doesn't seem as funny if you don't hear anyone else laugh. They should bring back the laugh track. And the I am all for it. Bring back the applause. <laughs> how know. do you how do you think we're going to come out of this? Because first off, I don't think it's going to come. We're coming out of it soon, and I think so many things are going to change. It's going to be in phases, obviously, and the nightlife is the last phase to come back. I think in New York City, can I live without a drag show? <laughs> I've seen a lot in my life. I can <laughs> wait. And also, like I said, they're on Facebook Live. But yeah, it is with different values. It's with a sense of distrust, but also with a sense of humility. Mm -hmm. We've dropped all, I mean, we've lost everything. We've lost friends and loved ones. Uh, many of us have lost jobs and our entire livelihood. Uh, I think it's, I remember out right after 9-11, New Yorkers on the street were like reaching out and holding each other, total strangers, and stopping and talking to each other because that wall had dropped. And New, right. York, place, New York is a place of incredible, exciting individuals where we were reaching out for connection, where in the past we had put up a bit of a pretense. I think the same thing will happen once we have the vaccine and we don't have to be afraid of contact anymore. What do you think realistically about a timeline for Broadway? Patty, I think, said that January uh, it'll start again, and she said company has the backing to come back. Some of the shows are not going to come back. They were based yeah. on certain schedules of the actors. They were based on certain finances. Mm -hmm. A lot of the shows that were going to come are, are never going to surface, and that's really tragic. But I think starting next year, we're going to see a trickle back, and I don't know how they're going to do it. If a mother comes with her daughter to see Wicked, is the daughter going to be sitting six rows behind her? Yeah. Honey, honey, 
<laughs> I'll meet you in Penn Station after this. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do it. I saw, I just read an article, I think it was last week, that, uh, where is it, Williamstown in Western Mass, they were, Audra was going to do streetcar, is that right? Yeah. And now they're, do, they're going to do their season as an audible season. Well, you know. I mean, which I guess it's better than nothing, but. Yeah, I was in a movie that was going to be in the SXSW festival, it's called I'm Going to Make You Love Me, a documentary about a D-trans uh, person named Brian Belovich. Now it's all being, the whole festival is being shown on Amazon Prime. And right. so Eric in the Times said, well, this isn't the same. It's like, hey, newsflash, this Nothing. is done. We can't show it in the festival. This is not a slight to the filmmakers. This is a way to get their work shown. So you make do. Uh, yeah, an audible version of Audra is better than nothing. Yeah, and like you said, it is based on timing. And when all things come together, at least you recorded audio because you may not be able to get everyone together at another time. Hey, you know, she's always magical, so I'll take her. In the, uh, I will too. I And well, I think one opportunity we missed was um, uh, Who's Afraid Virginia Woolf has definitely canceled. Laurie Metcalf, Rupert Everett, um, and Russell Tovey. Who's the honey? Do you remember? Um, Patsy Farron. Okay, and um, they've already said that won't happen. Anybody, anybody straighten that show? Yeah, no, it's the all gay version. Okay, good, that's how it should be. In fact, yeah. Rupert Everett probably should have played Martha. And Rupert, <laughs> he had replaced Eddie Izzard who dropped out. And Eddie, right, yeah. exactly. So yeah, do I, can I live without another Virginia Woolf? Yes, but do I want to live without another Virginia Woolf? No, that's yeah. how and I, I And I also think for certain actors, it is a one-time opportunity to play a role. Now, I think Laurie Metcalf can play the role in 10 years. I don't know if Rupert Everett will get another chance. So that's, or, and Russell Tobey you know, will age out of it. Lori Metcalf has become the queen of Broadway. I mean, everything she does is a home run. And what is she doing next year? It's Death of a Salesman with Nathan? Nathan Lane, yes. So she's got projects backed up. Laurie Metcalf is always working. They're going to do it as a, as a slapstick comedy. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> as a musical. I can't try, Willie. I'm too busy laughing. <laughs> no, no, no. They're gonna, Nathan Lane happens to be obviously a brilliant dramatic actor as well. Oh, yeah. And he was Terrence McNally's muse in many ways, so they had a falling out, then they made up. And, I, uh, think that, I think the collaborative people like that, often it's a road that goes up and down. And if your emotions are that high, I don't know how it couldn't. I need a muse. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta right know. now you amuse. That's all that Thank we Thank you. Yeah, I'm an amuse boosh. <laughs> and I had a well, lot of people that did inspire me along the way. But now that I'm sitting here just staring at the wall all day, I do think of the people. Uh, okay, well, speaking of someone who amuses both of us, who is at a, uh, we, we just did a lighting check beforehand, and she's like, now, how does the lighting look? Is it too stark? Like, am I in a, am I in a, uh, a hostage video? She looks fabulous. I would say that she looks gorgeous no matter what lighting. That's what I said. Oh, she's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, oh, I just want to say one story before I bring her on. Rosalind Kind. A lot of people will know her as Barbara Streisand's sister. I, of course, remember her because I first saw her and she knocked my socks off in a Provincetown cabaret. And I fell in love with the CD that she was selling. She didn't have any more. I gave her my information. I paid her for the CD and told her I needed it for a friend's birthday. She express mailed it to me. And it, the postage cost more than what I paid her for the CD. So I will never forget that. I saw her at 54 Below. I even went back to my native Brooklyn to see her. She's always great in concert. And here she is, Miss Rosalind Kind. Yes. Yes. Hey, hey. Rosie. Hello from the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? How are you handling all this? Uh, you know what? For the whole first whole month, not bad because I, you know, Harlan's been keeping me busy. I've been doing phone interviews and Zoom interviews, which have been a lot of fun. And sure. it would, you know, talk about some topics of importance and then some fun topics. And um, so that's been keeping me busy. And uh, I do a little meditation via Zoom also. Uh, one of my favorite uh, teachers uh, for meditation is in Berlin. So he's coming from Berlin. And, uh, and then I have another place that I go here. So I'm doing that. I only went out for a walk once. Really? Yeah, my last Sunday. I, my friend drove here in his car. 
We both had gloves and masks. We, I was in the gutter. He was on the sidewalk. <laughs> and we walked on, on West Third Street up because there was nobody there. <sighs> yeah. I know. So are you gutter. telling me Rosalind Kine was in the gutter? In the gutter. <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time there, but you know. <laughs> and, you you make sing, Roz? Do you really sing to keep in shape? Um, I hum a lot. Jesus. Uh, right now I'm in the middle of um, uh, doing a video, putting together a video for light, my last release, Light of Love. Because mm -hmm. I put that out without a video. So I'm doing that and uh, and thinking about the next songs because we just finished, oh, I, I'm in the studio, I think. So I just finished a song a recording called Light of, uh, not Light of Love, Light of Love is released, Save the Country is released. Um, the next one out I think is gonna be an Isley Brothers cover, Harvest for the World. Oh, wow. What the messages in this time and space. Do you think that that is what the time we're in now is it yeah. is more about messaging rather than pure yeah. entertainment? Well, you know what it is? I, you know, I don't know how people take it, but my heart hurts mm -hmm. when I see what's going on. And I wish people would just come together in good times and not have to wait for a catastrophe. You know, I do believe sure. there's a big lesson in this to learn to love unconditionally and accept people for who and what they are, not their color, not their size and shape, not whether they're gorgeous or they're not so gorgeous. Love their hearts. Mm -hmm. I wish we could all come together that way. And I'm on a mission with my little voice, whatever that holds, to try and do that. I wanna, I wanna help heal people in this, on this planet and heal our planet. So, although don't, I, I do have some real good Broadway ballads on there. Yes, you do. On the album, and the one that's gonna be coming out. You're like a Jewish Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> not a Jewish Buddha. <laughs> no, because we're not talking about size. No, <laughs> no fat shame. Exactly. Um, Michael, where did you meet Roz? Oh, that's a good First. question. I think it's when I went to Brooklyn, and I never go to Brooklyn because I'm from there. <laughs> the second yeah, where, I where in Brooklyn are you from, Michael, originally? Bensonhurst. Bensonhurst, we had relatives in Bensonhurst. We were in Flatbush. Yeah, that's nearby. And that's yeah. a very traditional old school Italian American residential neighborhood. At least it was when I grew up there. And uh, realizing I was gay, I was like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> gay was not on the menu there. <laughs> and I went to Columbia and then eventually just moved to Manhattan. But then, of course, what happens? Everyone says, all the action's happening in Brooklyn now. Brooklyn's fabulous all of a sudden. You have to go back. It's so why, let me ask you something, because didn't you come see me at like 88s and stuff? Didn't I meet you way before Brooklyn? And before yeah, Brooklyn I've Brooklyn? been actually stalking you. Huh? <laughs> I mean, I thought, I thought I met you a lot earlier when I was doing Three from Brooklyn and- uh, Yes, yes. And I, we were I, times I, at the rec, rec. When I see your name, I'm there, and it's been many years of me uh, trailing you. And <laughs> Have you been trailing me, Michael? Just <laughs> not in a dangerous way. Not, not where you need to get a restraining order. Don't worry. <laughs> well, Roz just mentioned Three from Brooklyn, which you did on Broadway, and it starred also one of my uh, one of my dear friends who's no longer with us, Miss Adrian Tolsh. Oh, Adrian is not with us. No, she passed away a few years ago. Oh, she I didn't know. know. But she I was one of the great comedians. She was. She was fabulous. Right. How did that come around, Roz? Because that was, and I would think you would have done, been asked to do Broadway a million times. You know, I have. You would think, right? You think? I mean, I've I've, I've done Leader of the Pack in Canada. I mm -hmm. did a, a, a show called Ferguson the Tailor that was supposed to go to Broadway, but it was that was L.A. Right? Right at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. It was mm -hmm. it was a work in progress, and we were hoping to bring it to Broadway. It was kind of like Sadie and Mutt will uh, come come to. Um, Chava, well, no, what is it? It wasn't Sadie. It was, yeah, but my name was Sadie. Sadie, <laughs> because he's a tailor in here too. <laughs> come to America. So it starts opening where we're on the ship coming into, you know, into uh, getting our, our, our allowance into uh, America. Because and, you're very funny. I just think of you, even though you have this amazing voice, you have this very fun comedic presence. Whenever I've seen you, you tell very funny stories. You engage with the audience really personally, which I think comes from playing the cabaret venues, probably. It probably also comes from jeans. My mother was very funny. She never really realized it. but I Really? Was, yeah, my friends tell stories about my mother all the time. 
because she, she would come out and say things. Like, you know, I remember my friend, Tony Chase. Remember Tony, may rest in peace? Sure, of course. And Anthony Niglio, when we first knew each other. We were both in high school and studied for the Regents exams, although he was in Queens and I was in Brooklyn. And uh, we went, we took our mothers to see Goodbye Mr. Chips with Petula Clark and Peter O'Toole oh, <laughs> on Broadway. And it was it's hysterical. We come out of, the, out of the movie, it's over. And his mother says, yeah, you think they would have noticed that rip in hit the corner of his hat, you know, the, the graduation <laughs> hat. Why would they have let him go on like that? And my <laughs> mother, her big summary of the movie was, well, it just goes to show you, it pays to be good to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Did your mother have the kind of mean edge that I've heard about that's kind of legendary? A mean edge? I think it kind of puts you in your place. Well, she, well, she you know, said it like it was. Well, you know what? Yeah, I guess, you know, she had, she could be a little bit abrasive <laughs> at times. Sometimes it, was, sometimes it was funny, but yeah, you know. It's humbling. I, I have to tell you, there were certain things that would happen in my family that I didn't like, and I did not want to adopt those habits. <laughs> I try to be peaceful. You know, it, has, it takes a lot to get me to that point. Roz, I have somebody here that wants to say hi because I one of the things I do in my show is I bring in surprise guests. Uh -huh. So Roz, let's see if uh well you're gonna know who it is. I can't, I'm not even bother bringing in just the voice. So uh you go back a long way with, with Michael, Michael Orland. Orland. Michael! Oh hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprising you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting at my piano in case you want to sing a song, but oh, um, let, me let me just let me explain to people. people. So, so Michael Orland, um, um, amazing, amazing pianist, pianist accompanist. accompanist. You've seen, seen him on American, American Idol, Idol all, all the time. time. Somebody, Somebody has a little, a little feedback. feedback. There's a little feedback coming from the speakers. Whatever. Um, <laughs> and um, I knew I that Michael, Michael played for Ross. How long do you? How long do you guys go back? Oh, we go way we go back. Like 1986, 87. I think the first thing Michael, I think the first thing he really played for me was a private for the people who own Sunset Magazine at their house. Oh. At the time, I had just um, moved here and um, to LA. No, I think, yeah, but I was still like, I didn't have a piano at my place and we rehearsed at Waylon Flowers' house. That's right. <laughs> Remember that? We did. We definitely did. He was away. He was working, and we did work at it. We used his piano. Was Madame the Puppet there? No, she was with Waylon. She had to work, too, you know. <laughs> oh, hold on. Wait, now we don't have Michael. Hold on. There he is. What you say? Uh, we, we went into the, her, the garage after he left, and we you know put her on and took pictures. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you walked out with Madame. Yeah. Oh my God! It's nice to see Michael too. I played for Michael. I played piano for Michael at um, Birdland a, like six months ago. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. 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 With Susie Mosier. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think walking yeah. by your baby, you're not even realizing. That's right. I think I could come in and that that What is it? I said I should have a movie that series that Susie does. No, right, Michael Musto. What was the show that you did? Uh, Susie Mosher does this sort of all-star review, and I thought, oh, she asked me to do it, so uh, it must be kind of low-level people like myself. <laughs> I walk in, and it's Pat McPhee, <laughs> American Idol. It's uh, who the other lady from American Idol who was like booming out some talent. And I was like, holy. Oh, Kimberly Locke. Oh, 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 Kimberly Locke. Yeah. 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 But I was something a self amazing cute thing, and it went over okay. It was uh, Michael Moose, uh, Michael Orland, your volume is a little loud, so I'm getting an echo. I don't know if you can do it. Close your lips. Thank you. Yeah, I knew you were going to. There's an old show joke. Oh, God. It's not old when Roz and I do it. No. Um, no, that's fair? perfect. Thank you. That was a pudgy joke. That was a pudgy exactly. joke. But you know, and, so the song oh. that Roz just released, tell yep. them Roz, because now yep. Christine Petty, Christine Petty texted me this morning and she said, 
The only thing that makes me happy right now is to watch old episodes of The Nanny. She said, I watched two weeks <laughs> of them this morning. She said, was that you playing piano with Rosalind on that episode that I just wet my yep. pants? I said, that was it. Yeah. And we really, and that's the song we I just released. Where my, we wrote the song. Michael did the, the music, and Judy Quay and I did the lyrics. And uh, yeah. Stefan Overhoff did an incredible arrangement. And we, I, 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 did I, I, I mean, when we first did it on, we did it on a talk show, right? We did, we do it on. We Geraldo. did it on Geraldo. Remember Geraldo Rivera? <laughs> yeah, I did. I do. Oh, when he was a Democrat. Do you remember that when we got to the Rose Tattoo, when we came there and we announced the New Age show that we were going to try out material, the minute her, we taped Geraldo the month before, and then when we were going, we made the announcement, and we got back to L.A., and the Rose Tattoo said their phones haven't stopped. They said, can't you hold her over? We can't get there. We're, we live in Oshkosh. So can't you hold her over for more than those shows? We were just trying out the material. So all of it was new age and positive messages of love. And so light of love was part of it and so it saved the country. See, it's so much like Musto and I. We're light and positivity. <laughs> you have to be, you know? You have to learn to, to laugh at yourself, too. You oh. can't. You know, well, we were evil and vicious queens for many years, but now we're mellowing a little bit. <laughs> uh, Musto, do you did you know Michael Orland? Have you gone? Do you two go back, or was it no, just no, no, no? But we did. I was uh, a big fan of his always, and always was reading him in uh, you know in the Voice and everything. But I um, I got to meet him for the first time when we worked together at Birdland, which was so fun. Wow! And I said, "Do not look at me," and you must call me Miss Musto. <laughs> <laughs> and I follow uh, the orders, and that's why I, he let me stay. Well, there you go. It's all about keeping your accompanist in line. That's right. Uh -huh. You've been doing it with me for 30 years. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, maybe. But I'm always in awe of people like Rosalind, Lorna Love. These are like my favorite uh, entertainers. I'm just. Oh, this is so sweet, Michael. I know that Thank I can you. just sit there and. Thank you. Can you promote our record? Can you promote our single? Because I'm. Too. Of course we're going. We're all going. Michael all the time. I can do just so much because I'm not. Te I'm technologically challenged. What's the and yet you're doing this. We have. See, I'm lucky. I have a lot of. And you say, what? I have a lot of young students who like teach yeah. me about the, um, right. the social media and everything. So I'm whenever I can give Roz a hot tip, I do because she's <laughs> always like going, "How do I post this?" And but we're getting better at it. We're getting better, but it's slow, slow. I, I mean, I think these messages, songs, which you know are enlightening, I, I it's so important to go around the globe. I just you know. Absolutely, but the Roz, let me you have Facebook, Roz, right? Oh, I yes, Rod is on Facebook. On Facebook, and it's on my, my professional page for my fans, and it's on my private page, and whoever else I can get to spread it. <laughs> Not enough. You can't put it on Instagram. It doesn't allow it. You know? Right. So where do we go? But, Michael, you have to post more about it. You have to maybe okay, do yeah, I will. I will, I will go to your page, and I will share. Yeah. I will share. How about that? Yeah. Um, Roz, let me yeah. show you a photo. I found this ad. I had recently done a uh, the final show I hosted at Studio One, the back lot. Oh, my God. Oh, my Orland's God. Dead. Oh. Orland told me he had a call. Do you have to go, honey? I'm so yeah. sorry I have to go, but um, I love you all. And, Roz, I love you so much. Yeah. And I I thank you for having me, Billy. I'm so happy to Orland, we'll have you again. We're going to do a show about Idol, so we'll have you there for that. Perfect. I'm not Thank afraid. you, sweetie. All right, be Thanks good, you guys. Thanks for coming, Mikey. Bye. Bye. That was just the first of many surprise guests. You really? never know who'll show up. Oh. Um, so, like, Rosie, like, I want, is your life? <laughs> yeah, it sort of is a little bit. Rosie, I found this ad. I had done the hosted the closing night of Studio One and the back lot. And I know it was a place you performed a lot of times in LA. And I found this. Yeah. Now, I don't know. You weren't with um, Michael Orland back then. Who was your pianist? Um, oh, I can't see. Jay Asher? Jay Asher, yeah. Okay. Who is that? He's a piano player. He worked a lot with Paul Jabara and, oh, wow. uh, yeah, and Bob Esty. He, you know, he did a lot of work with them. He's, How, still, he's still out there. He's out here. You so, know, they would call my musical directors, you know, they, you have oh, to, God. not everybody's available all the time. Yeah, It's so tough because I, when I get used to somebody and I know that they're, I'm comfortable because they know where I'm going to breathe, then I feel relaxed. Right, of course. I just, I'm like anxiety ridden until I know that. 
Have you ever had a gig where the accompanist doesn't show up? Uh, I had a, I had a gig where one of them got sick when we were in London. And, uh, all of them ah. kicked out. Yeah, and my my first night had to be canceled. And the mm. owners of the green room wanted me to go on and do the whole show a cappella. I said, you know, so <laughs> number one, I'm worried about him, and right. number two, I'm not doing a whole show a cappella. <laughs> right. Thank you. Either. You're not but, yeah. but it made the news, you know, but I, I remember working in Jamaica and the uh, band there, I didn't have a musical director with me. I was going to use their people. My manager was with me at the time and uh, no, nobody showed up for the rehearsal for the, <laughs> for the night. We were to open. <laughs> they, and the hotel couldn't find them. So I didn't open that night. Then the next day they it came. Better that they didn't. It was the band that didn't show. No, I think you were going to tell me the audience didn't show. This is a funny story because when they did show up, I had like a twelve-hour rehearsal and they couldn't cut anything. The leader of the band played guitar. His wife played organ, no piano, organ, and the, the only drum beat the drummer knew was reggae. <laughs> <laughs> God does reggae. And the horn player, and they would drop the music, and the wife is yelling out the chords to the husband on guitar. I got a 20-minute show out of that 12-hour rehearsal. <laughs> and I burst my chords because I was everything. Ten, so I'll do it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was walking out one night, and some lady said, boy, she didn't thank the band. That's not nice. And she, the, the, <laughs> I heard the woman's response. would you have? <laughs> <laughs> Did you make a recording of that show? No. Who who, who traveled with recording stuff? I know. Do? Right. I don't even still do that. I should because I, I never know. have in my shows. They're you know really good. See, that's why Red Queens have the right idea. They're just like, here's my backup tracks. Right. <laughs> and I'm all set. But yeah, then, of course, you can't be live the moment. stage, I guess. Yeah. I don't, I'm not comfortable with live tracks because I change how I, how I sing something. So to be locked into the way it was done this particular time, you know? Yeah, I think there are some performers who really are used to that and that's how they work. And they're in that straight jacket and really yeah. most who are used to interpreting a song, mm -hmm. they need to be in the moment. I definitely am a back phraser. Yes, back well. So, you know, I could drive somebody who only knows to play on the beat crazy. And especially that's why if they know me and they know how I, Perform, they know where I'm going to breathe. There's no problem. I love right. that. I think Diana Ross does that too. Yeah. <laughs> you when, when you're on stage, because this has happened to me, have you ever just blanked out? Like, where the hell am I? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you think anybody hasn't had that experience? Of course. And you said, oh, oh, my God. Sometimes I've turned this up. And then sometimes I've just made up lyrics till I got my head got where I was. <laughs> and, so I, I, and I said, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. And they said, nobody even realized it. Do you realize they don't know? And I think that everybody does know. <laughs> well, in that moment, I think you think it's so magnified when it's yeah. really such a, I, I have been in plays where I'm like, oh, that was crazy. And then you look it back and it was like 20 seconds, but it felt uh, like an hour. Yeah. That's yeah. why I tape everything. Every time I'm on TV, I, keep, I watch it. So it's like, I wasn't that bad. You know, <laughs> because I think your recollection is it was so yeah. much worse. Yeah. yeah, and Leslie Uggams has that famous thing. She was singing "June is busting out all over," and the yeah. guy, the cue cards was falling in the mud because it was raining. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I made up a whole new language. It was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's what do you do? You know, what do you do? You know what? I've I've learned to make fun with laugh at myself. I've learned to be calm about it. You know, what do you? Well, that's I think right. I noticed that. It's human. It's human. One of the I, things I love about your shows is you have that affable quality. You're playing with the moment. You're self-effacing. You're laughing with the audience. That's an important thing. Johnny Carson had that too. I love that. And I love to look at my audience. I love to see the eyes. And, and talk I to them. them. I mean, not, not, talk not, them. not at them, but right. make them part of, of me. Make them part of the show. And to make them feel, they all come, they, they feel like they're in my living room. Do you know that that um, the concert in Brooklyn, there was this mm -hmm. lovely little old gentleman who came up to me when I was signing autographs. And he said to me, excuse me, can I give you a hug? And I said, but of course. <laughs> so he gave me this big, tight bear hug. And then he says, oh, who needs a doctor when we have you? Say, there you go. A great compliment. I mean, we're going to get through this because of you. We're going to get through everything. I would just want everybody to come from their heart, come from that light that's in that heart that God created in us and use it for the right reasons in the right way. Wouldn't it be a better world? 
I don't know. Michael, what do you think? Enough with the green. Is love, love, sweet love. I And I do hope, yeah, I think people can be the cure to, to a lot of things. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I think so. And I think also doing things like this, talking and sort of people watching and saying, oh, look at these guys are kind of creating a normal. We're hanging mm -hmm. out, we're chatting like we would if we were in person. Mm -hmm. And I think it inspires other people to do things like this. Yeah, but I just want people to come together. I don't like what's going on, uh, separating the country, separating the people. I want people to learn to, accept. I mean, growing up in Brooklyn, Michael, it was such a melting pot. And we had churches and, and all kinds of churches and my temple was there. Anyway, I grew up, my sister worked in the Chinese restaurant. They were our neighbors. She, they babysat, they went to school with me. We, all, we, all, we, were, we were a community. We were, mm -hmm. what they call it, a project. And all the older uh, parents would come in the summer and sit, they would line up their chairs and kibitz on the side and they would all watch sure. their children. We did that, yeah. A neighborhood, a neighborhood. I could go to the store for my mother and never cross the street. Right. You know, I mean, it was just, a, it was different. It was, there was such an innocence. And I really feel for the kids today who don't, can't, can't, that's not what it is today. So they can't experience that kind of. Uh, I think it depends where you live, too, because there are even parts, Michael will know, in New York where it will feel like a little neighborhood. You may know the people on your block, say, sections mm -hmm. of the village or wherever. I feel like sometimes I'm the mayor of Manhattan because I know everybody. It's like Mayberry. It really is a small town. <laughs> but I want to ask you, Roz, did you go for Chinese every Sunday? I think so. <laughs> every stereotype. Okay. Well, some Sunday breakfast was lox and bagels. You know, of from this appetizing store. Friday night was Shabbat, so it was chicken soup, whatever. Mm -hmm. And of course, Sunday and on Christmas and all those holidays, we were in the Chinese restaurant. Combination. Of course. Combination. Of course. Of course. Of course. But <laughs> the, remember the difference in price? Oh, yeah. Well, you could oh. feed a family. You could feed a family for a couple of bucks. Yeah. With and for a couple of days. Yeah. Unbelievable when I think of it. I the big moment of my childhood, my aunt, the nun took me to see The Sound of Music, the movie, and the cashier said, oh, you get him free because you're a nun, and it's a nun movie. <laughs> There's a law out of rule. Wow. The oh, Radio God. City Music Hall was 99 cents before 5 o'clock. Oh, really? And then that that and a quarter. Lifestyle. I was like, I want to be on the guest list for the rest of my life. And I love the movie Sound of Music. It's fun yeah. right around. From the second Julie Andrews was spinning around the Alps, I, 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 mean, I knew this is my world. Take me there. <laughs> And you ended up being really a part of the entertainment business. Yeah. From the outskirts. <laughs> well, but no, but I think that there is a really a symbiotic relationship between performers and the press. And um, I think that both really need each other to survive. I think so, especially if they're nice people that come from the heart. <laughs> well, and also if they ask more. Well, and if they yeah, all tell I was you. always a harsh critic, but uh, then someone said to me, you really should show your appreciation. You wouldn't be covering celebrities if you didn't love them. And I was like, that's, that's a really true. good point. It doesn't weaken you uh, if you show the fact that you adore these people and what they do. And right. I learned to do that more. I, my feeling is, is that nobody needs a big ego. Just be right. you. You know, we all have value. We all have a, a contribution to make to life. We have to earn our way back to that light with universal unconditional love. Why can't we do it in good times, not wait for a catastrophe to bring us together? And then you wonder how long will this feeling last after the catastrophe? Well, I remember Michael had mentioned 9-11 and I was supposed to fly out um, to LA on that day and I didn't. I instead, I uh, so w when flights started going, the very first day that you could fly, I flew from Boston to Los Angeles and the airline, the airport was so packed and yet you could hear a pin drop and people were so nice. They were saying, excuse me, after you, let me help you. And I said, let's see how long this lasts. And it was about a month, Michael. Yeah. Yes, for a month. Yeah, cool. <laughs> That's usual. You no, know, I find even when I'm on the phone, we're doing you know, like with uh, some some somebody representing a company that I want to order from. I sometimes get into a com a real long conversation with them, just on you know about anything. I, what does it take for people just to be human? I don't know. Why do people are afraid of people who have more money or who have some a certain amount of fame? Why? 
Why does that exist? Well, again, I think people are so self-involved. They don't think about it maliciously. They just don't, they don't bother. Well, we need to stop. They need to stop bothering. We need to stop bothering. You have to care about the next guy like you want to be cared about. And the bottom line is we all need and we all want the same things out of life. And everybody should have that chance and that opportunity. Everybody. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think you have to really think if you're going to be self-absorbed, also think how do you want to be treated? Mm -hmm. But and, and, and realize that you need to do that for the next person. You need to give that back. What you would, would expect for you, you need to be. Right, exactly. Because if you aren't that, you're not going to get it. No. no. Um, Michael, first, I've kept you long. I'm sorry, but I want to say I love having Michael Busto here. Michael, I have other guests, but I want to say thank you for doing the show. Thank you, Billy. Roz, it's great to see you. Michael, great to see you, too. Have a wonderful Next time time. I'm in New York. Let's have a, a coffee or something. A nosh. Have a nosh. A nosh. <laughs> Michael, tell Michael, uh, where are you writing right now? Uh, right, I'm writing for uh, appearing on newnownext.com. Okay. Which, uh, you know, a site. And I'm everywhere. I'm like crab grass. You know, you know oh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you're still one of the best. Nobody does it better. And you do the best blind items. Mine are crap. Yours are the best. What is a blind item? It's when you tell a story without giving the name of the person, but oh, you give oh, clues so they oh, can figure it out. Okay. It's now something about Stevie Wonder. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Michael, I love you. Thank you so much, Have Michael. Have a cool day, sweetheart. Bye. Roz, okay, we've got some comments before we go to, oh, another we guest. So let's, see, let's see who we've got here. We've got... Ellen Harris is saying Rosalind is lovely. Oh, thank you, Ellen. Uh, oh, let me ask you this, Ros. Um, now, we know your sister took the A out of her name on her own. Mm -hmm. I did, did not. The spelling? Your mom came up with this? No, my sister was named B-A-R-B-A-R-A. -A -A. My sister right. did that when she went into show business. Right. And what about your name, the spelling? Was this your my, mother's? Yeah. Nope. This is Ro like, like, like Rosalind Long Island. I never had an A in my name. It's always you R -O -I -N, never did. and I'm the only one in the family without a middle name. I feel cheated. Really? I'm the everybody has a middle name but me. Did you ask your mother why you don't have a middle name? I, you know what? I don't know. Maybe there wasn't. I used to try to make my own up. Rosalind Rose, Rosalind Violet. <laughs> Nothing really felt right, but I felt really cheated. I felt like I wasn't loved. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, who else do we hear? We have Paul Novello. Love you guys. Hi, You're a sweet, sweet and genuine Hi, person with great energy and a beautiful smile. Oh, thank you. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. Uh, oh, oh yes. this one is great. This reminds me. Uh, hey, Roz, remember my dad, Frank Taliercio? Taliercio. And Uncle John? Uh, yeah, they, uh, they were with my manager and they were a duo and they were... Uh, and I worked with them a little bit. They did some songs, and I did a couple of their songs with them on demo. Wow. Um, they did some ba backup. And uh, one of the, the Ed Sullivan shows I did where I had backup, uh, was it Beautiful Day? They were yep. in, they were the two behind me singing. Um, and uh, that's who they are. That's who and they are. Ryan. Yeah. I think Ryan is one of the sons. Of, yes. uh, she, one of, he's one of the sons. Hi, Ryan. Tell uh, you, Brian, I said hi. And speaking of Ed Sullivan, you did, you were really young. You were what, 19, 18? Uh, 18. Wow. February 1969 was my debut on Ed Sullivan. I mean, that's part of television yeah. history, really. Yeah. You think, well, Ed Sullivan was a part of television history. So yeah. His show was being, you know, kind of written down in history. Yeah. And I, I did it at the night of a big snowstorm. Oh, geez. At least you made it there. I had a walk to the theater from 57th and 8th, between 8th and 9th, where I was living with my mom. I had a walk to the Ed Sullivan Theater in the blizzard. My umbrella was going inside out. There were no cabs. Was, uh, the wind was her horrifying. The but you weren't going to miss a television appearance. <laughs> well, I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. I was scheduled. You know, the show must go on. That's what I say. All right. So, so Robin really? Lippman, Robin Lippman, Rosie, Rosie, you look gorgeous. This is such a treat. Thank you for doing this. Oh, sweetheart, thanks for coming in. Love you. Uh, we got oh, we got so many. But so now you mentioned your mom, so I want to show. Mm -hmm. We have a photo of your mom. 
I, and you, your mom, and your sister, which I love this picture. You do? I no, do. Do you no, not like it? It's not one of the best ones we've taken. There are others that look better. All right. Well, you'll send me another one but, for the next time. But that was when I was due. I had a, a stack perm and I was wearing disco pants. This was at the back lot. This was oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And then this one, which I love, this just shows, I guess maybe it's three generations of Oh, you. my God. Yes, it is. Look at Jason with his tongue. And that's my niece, my niece, Erica. Is that Sheldon's daughter? Yeah. My brother's daughter, who is now, a mo her, her kids are now in their 20s. Wow. And Haley is out there. She did some working with kids in Israel for quite several months now. And she's working with other people in North Carolina now, I think. But she's got a great, uh, a great thing. She's going to go back to Columbia, I think, maybe up, uh, to New York to get uh, more education. She loves working with people. She's really um, good hearted. You know what? I love yeah. them that they have been brought up so well and that mm -hmm. they're members, they give back to the community. So it's, it's so much to be proud of. And Jason, with his voice and his good heart, they all have. And so I will tell you, Jason was going to be on with us, but Jason had very spotty internet connection, but he loves you. Oh, he and he, <laughs> he said to me, he said, um, he said, I would do anything for my Auntie Ross. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but that for him? Yeah. yeah, you you mentioned your bro your brother. Not a lot of people really talk about your brother Sheldon. There you are. It's a good looking family. This was at the grand finale, my opening night at the grand finale in New York. Oh, really? Nineteen seventy six, I think, or seventy seven. I can't remember what year I did Saturday Night Live and what year I did the grand finale, but it's within a year of each other. Um. <laughs> so so how far apart in age was Sheldon and you? Shelly is seventeen years older than me. That's Real, so, older than my sister. So he was he around when you were growing up as much because I know Barbara was. Living with yeah, you Barbara, my sister was until she left home after because she graduated high school early. So she left home to go to New York, which made my mother Meshuga. She was yeah, so sure, of a child being in New York alone. But um, my my brother was home while I was a little kid, and then he got when I was five years old. He got married, and I was a flower girl in his wedding. Wow. So very close. We've, I've grown up very close to my brother, very close to my nieces and my nephews. And I love what, family. I love my family. What does Shelly do, Sheldon? Shelly's now retired. He's oh, living, really? He's in Florida now. He left New Jersey. And they're just, you know, re relaxing, taking it easy and uh, being part of the Florida lifestyle, in, in, you know, a little more north, in, in, uh, inland from uh, Palm Beach. He had been a was it a graphic artist? Yeah. What did he do? He was he was in advertising. I remember one really? day so, a time where I filled in for his secretary to take phone calls, and they no. went up from Lexington and Forty Some Odd Street to Fifty uh, Seventh between Sixth and Seventh and Sixth or Sixth mm -hmm. and something. Then they moved to Madison Avenue, and then he went on to other things in real estate. Wow. Yeah. So again, all successes, which is great. I'm sure your mother must have loved that. Oh, she was very proud. She, my mother, though, was never one to boast. She never really? wanted, you know, in, in the Jewish faith, we have a thing about, well, in, in Italian, it's the Malokia. Yeah, sure. Which is the Kanina Hara. So right. she put things out to make people jealous because she didn't want a curse coming on you. She was never a bragger. She wanted people to come tell her. Did she yeah. give 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 you that positive feedback? Because I know your sister has talked about that she would be like, this could be better. This could, you know, you don't want to give somebody a swelled head. Right. She was a big believer in not giving a swelled head. Right. She but, loved my sister and believed in my sister. My, you know, I went through the same thing. When I was heavy, if I lost weight, yo, you're too skinny. Then if I put on, oh, don't bend down. You're behind is like across. <laughs> it's like, you know. And then my mother and I would fight for the mirror when we when I would be putting on my albums when I was in high school, uh -huh. singing and acting out in the mirror. My mother, when she was available, would just float in front of me and, <laughs> and block me from the mirror and take over. No, she was she yeah she would have loved to, but she was never allowed to because in those days her family you know they thought it was a bum's business. They, you know, and she could have been an opera singer if she had some training. My mother had a glor our mother I should say had a glorious um, soprano voice. I remember meeting her once in Los Angeles years, obviously years ago, and I just found her, she gave off warmth. Now, again, I didn't know her from a whole in the world, but she would ask, she'd look you in the eye and she's like, so what do you do and do you eat and blah, blah, blah. She was very much a warm sort of hands-on kind of person. 
Yeah, and, and you know, I, but she was critical if she thought she wanted to say, you know, if I had a friend who was overweight, she wouldn't min mince words. What are you eating that for? <laughs> there you go. You know, or, <laughs> so, or um, what else are the other, I was just thinking of another situation. Um, so she just spoke her mind and sometimes I learned and I, that sometimes speaking your mind too much is not really good either. You know, right. be honest, but be careful how you word things to people. It affects them. It affects Did you feel people. that the that the interpretation in the mirror has two faces with Lauren Bacall? Did that have any of your mother in it? Um, I don't know that that was my mother. My mother wasn't as glamorous. She was, you know, she she worked hard all her life. She became from a school secretary, from a secretary, regular secretary. She went to college at night when I was at school to mm -hmm. become a, a school secretary to work for really? education. And that was in her later years. And she worked there until she retired. You know, she was a very proud woman. I mean, she wasn't looking for handouts. She wasn't, she, she held her weight, you know, mm -hmm. And she she took pride, but she just wasn't loud and boisterous, and you know she wasn't the kind to say, "Look who my daughters are." You know, look, yeah, she just wasn't that way. Right. She just wasn't that way. Well, time for another surprise guest, and this is somebody who's kind of tied to you and your sister, as a matter of fact, right. in more recent years. Um, another really good friend and supporter of mine, Richard J. Alexander. <laughs> Did you get my email? <laughs> I knew that was the first thing you were going to ask me. Speaking of light and positivity, here I am. Oh, honey. There you are, is right. I'm sorry, if Michael's still watching, Michael, I'm sorry I didn't get to say hello to you, meaning Michael. Um, Who's so? Orland. Oh, Orland? No, both of them. Michael, both Michael, of them. Michael, Michael, Orland, Michael Orland I work with also. Yeah, hi, everybody. Hi, hi. Hey, honey. You're good. You're looking great, Richard. I haven't Thank seen you. Thank you. I haven't been this tanned since high school. <laughs> <laughs> I, have well, to do. I have that package still in my closet for you. I know, I know. <laughs> Believe me, I know. And I, I was going to bring it up, but I thought. Guys. Uh, <laughs> this is when you wish you lived in L.A. Uh, I found this photo of you guys, and I'm just going to show it. You were celebrating 11 years on Facebook as friends yeah. as oh, of wow. yesterday. Right. I, that, I was, uh, that was Broadway Visits Oz yes, when Rod right. came to New York just before her big solo show, and she yeah. came and sang in New York. Yeah, at Joe's Pub. Yep. I posted that yesterday on, on uh, I know. I saw, I saw it. And I got it. Yeah. And, of course, Richard and I were just together. What was it now? Two months now? It's about two months, yeah. We oh, were at the, there we are, at the, uh, we're not supposed to say where we were, though. Apparently. The, winter, uh, the winter party. Well, we yes. were at the VIP party. We, we were at the VIP. We oh. weren't sweating anywhere on our underwear on the beach. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that at the time, people didn't know really this was coming. And do you yeah. go to the party? Do you not? Um, Richard, how are you doing? You're still in Miami, obviously. I'm doing you were it's giving out everybody. food to Look, the I homeless know. yesterday. I did. I'll tell you something. It was life changing. It wasn't homeless. It was um, families in need. And so North Beach did a collective. And you know how the farms are throwing stuff away? Because it's too much. So yeah. David Richardson, who's one of the commissioners here, decided to do it in North Beach. And a friend of mine called me to volunteer. And uh, we fed 500 families. And wow. it was like at the beginning when the cars started coming in, because we were there a couple hours early to pack the stuff, lay it out, mm -hmm. figure out how the cars drive by. You put the stuff in the trunk and the car started. And I started crying. Oh, you know, it's like, really? it's like, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, but um, these things make you just realize hard hitting, you know, what they got a turkey and eggs and yeah. vegetables and yogurt. And we're so grateful. And then one of the trunks I was putting stuff in and it had a sign with a little Christmas wreath on it said, thank you for your help. Aww. You know, if you should talk to the people or anything, the windows have to be up. The rules are very strict. You're in your room. So I was a mess. Then I came home and I had a total meltdown. Wow. And, you know, I've also been in a state over Nick Cordero, who I know very well. And, you know, his wife has just been heroic. Right. Oh, unbelievable. And, uh, you know, last, uh, I don't know, Kristen had a meltdown on Saturday. I had a meltdown on Sunday, screaming in the yard, you know, take me. I don't have any children. I don't have a wife who loves me. It just seems so, un I mean, I was in meltdown. So between that and all the first response, you know, it's like when people say, how are you doing? Like, I can't complain. And I have the water right out here and I can stretch yeah. in the yard. And, you know, I'm not in a high rise. Or some people have taught me the issue of gratitude because they don't even have the ability to be alone because they're in crowded rooms with people. So right. 
So I'm very, very grateful. And, you know, the news drives me nuts. You yeah. know, Rod and I are on the same page. Well, we're all on the same page on that. Yeah. But, you know, you can't talk to your friends about it because we're preaching to the choir. So, yeah. right. So we just got to do what we got to do in November, and that's it on that topic because I can't. I don't. I don't watch MSNBC all day like I was because it mm -hmm. was making me sick. I have like a malaise. You wake up <laughs> every day, and if I didn't get the newspaper, if I didn't get home delivery of the newspaper, I really wouldn't know what day it was. But mm -hmm. Rod, I got your email. We'll talk. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, we're talk. Thing now. Congratulations! I, I miss you. It's just, uh, it's it's uh, it's crazy. But Billy, you know, every time I'm scrolling through the Facebook, I see you on air, and this is kind <laughs> of thing. I mean, you're taking to it like a fish to water. You're obviously enjoying it. Well, I should explain to people that Richard was one of my first guests. I think you were my actual first guest. I was I'm, an accidental. I it was, was an accident. Scrolling, and I said, "Hey," and he goes, "Hey, could you be my test case?" And I'm on right. the couch. <laughs> Exactly. You know, housewives or something on Bravo, no doubt. And he's and just like, sure, I'll catch with you. And, um, you know, because we had to figure everything out. And um, Richard is a director, producer, actor. He does it all. So aside from co-producing and co-directing Barbara's Tours, how did you two meet way back? Or do you go way back? I, I remember when we met. Do you remember, Roz? Yes, I do. It was with Charlie Work on, the, on Broadway. I, we were walking. Oh, no, I don't think that was oh, it. Really? I think no? it was the UJA in New York City. Oh, that was, I think that, that was after we had met on the street. Oh, do you think so? Yeah, it was when Shelly was in New York and I was in New York and we I, we just came oh, out. that's right, because she didn't Saigon. stay in New York too long. You're probably right, yes. Yeah. We went to see Miss Saigon. Oh, that makes sense. And, and we <laughs> ran into you and that was the first time. And then, and then you sang for UJA, honoring Phil Smith of the Schubert yeah. organization. And then years went by, and you know we would see each other at parties at Barbara's or birthdays or whatever. And uh, and then we started working together. And it was how did uh, that come about? Uh, I can't remember if yeah, Ross asked me. Yeah, I think I asked. Yeah. <laughs> we were on tour, and we were out having drinks, waiting to go see a show in another in the Savoy. No, it was before that. It was at a birthday when we were out on the bluff when the barn was being built. Oh, so or maybe I the house was that. done. Talked huh. about, you know, do you, do you think you'd ever uh, consider working or, you know, whatever, yes. or, you know, I can't afford you, or it was one of those odd conversations. <laughs> and I'm the one and, in my uh, family that's in an, an actual apartment. I don't have the water and I'm by myself. But you got to remember that I really, you know, I hadn't seen Roz. I had the albums actually in vinyl mm -hmm. um, and I owned them, but I hadn't seen her perform. So when we went on tour as a family, and it really was like a family. There we were going all over Europe and Canada and the United States and Jason and Roz and mom. And, you know, and it was pretty fantastic. And uh, and then I got to see her do her thing. You know what I mean? And it also, I was thrilled about it because it put, you know, so many uh, uh, theories and rumors to rest, you know, about the sisters, you know, which, you know, the, the, tra the rags are just too much sometimes. So, you know, that was fantastic. And that beautiful night at the Hollywood Bowl. And, oh, you know, her mom amazing. became, yeah, and her mom became part of the show. Remember how cold it was that night, Billy? It was freezing. freezing. We were talking yeah. about it. I said to Roz earlier, I said, Barbara never took off the coat. I kept waiting to see the red dress. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was really a cold day. But I want to show, finally, it, people can see orange. the red dress. It was orange. It was orange dress. Oh, well, it was all right. Right. Coral. It was coral. It was deep coral. Oh, God, I was calling in now to correct me. Anyway, um, but this is a clip. I had never seen this clip before, what and I it? want to show a uh, clip. Okay. You'll see, and you'll say, hold on. Go. When there are clouds in the sky, we can Smile. 
I mean, what an amazing moment that is. I don't even remember. What city was that, Roz? Israel. Israel. That was Tel Aviv. Oh, that was in Israel? Yeah. Oh, Israel was amazing, Billy. I'm not Jewish, and that trip changed my life also. That was the most extraordinary event, and uh, I'll never forget it, Roz, because remember we did the rehearsal in the afternoon, and it was boiling hot. Boiling hot. hot. Yeah, yeah. And it was the last show. We had already done one sold out. So we were on night two. And maybe we had a day off in between. I can't remember. And so it was the last. That was where we were ending the tour, right? Right. And we were at the Dan Hotel and the beaches and all those gorgeous right. Israeli men. And it was pretty fantastic. <laughs> anyway, yeah. They're not Jewish guys. They're Israeli men. There's a big difference. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, and I remember <laughs> I added five songs to the show. Why wouldn't you? Because we did, uh, we did the, the Perez, the Simone, what's his name? Shimon Perez. Shimon Perez's birthday. So okay. we had done the TV thing already. We had done the first night of the concert and I thought, this is it. So Billy, I had never ever done, so, you know, Barbara came in and she goes, five songs. I go, listen, we may all never see each other again. And I remember oh, we were all there and Jason and you, and we're down there and, uh, and one of them was sending the clowns and in all my years, uh, with Barbara, we had never done Send in the Clowns. And I was literally like sitting at her feet and she was singing and I was at close range like this. And I just lost it. Like I just lost it because, and I started crying. She goes, you okay? I go, yeah. I go, you know, we've never done that song. And she goes, I love it. You know? And so it's a thing about connecting. Raj, you were talking about this earlier. You know, when you connect to your truth, when you sing things with purpose, it doesn't matter if critics like you or not, because that's your truth. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's connecting, and that's the thing. And, and neither of them, you know, sing anything that they're not interested in singing or singing it because it's voguish or you know whatever. And sometimes your biggest hits are your least favorite. You know what I mean? Well, you done them to death. You can't all, find something. That's all stars. Well, there's always something new to find, but that goes with everybody. It's like, oh, do I have to sing it? You know? And so I'm like, no, you don't have to. But I don't want to be around when they throw tomatoes. You know, like Ross, how did the idea of singing "Smile" come about? Because you had done the "Happy Days Are Here Again" duet. Because right. my sister was doing that in the concert with her other guests before on the other tours. She did "Smile," mm -hmm. and we had done the other one. And for the European tour, we changed it to "Smile." I oh. love the "Smile." I love yeah. it. I forgot about it. I mean, it's really interesting. And that's not too long ago. It's like, you know. Three years. And I, you know, I will say publicly to Richard, thank you. Richard has always included me. I've been to the oh, dress rehearsals. He always tries to. Dress rehearsals me. for only our closest friends. <laughs> well, but it, it's the, uh, yeah, the, the closest friend, the Staples Center was packed. And uh, so no, it's, it's a family really, and friends, I think. What you called. learn in those things, though, is extraordinary. What you actually learn. And that's a very famous one. You're talking about the one in LA, right? The yeah, right. One? I didn't go and, to the Philly one. I knew the Yeah, the and one I lied to everybody from the stage. I told a fib. And Which I told one? everybody that we had plain clothes people among them so that I didn't want anybody to take out their phones where they would be whisked out. And uh, <laughs> I just made it up. I just made it up out of my mind because you don't want song leakage. You don't want right. anybody to know, you know, what you're doing. You got to do your work. Listen, we need rehearsal too. You know what I mean? Right. In a vacuum, do you know what I mean, Roz? Even when we went to Europe, or you know, what song would Jason sing tonight, or stuff? You want to leave freedom for everybody, and of right. course, you've got a, a general shape that works. But it's you know, the thing about everybody that you know, um, in the family and everybody that I work with in general, everybody cares a lot, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of when course, you care, it matters. You're not arguing, you're actually just trying to get to the core of the you know, the the truth and what you want to do and what's best. And to do that, you have to examine everything. You have to examine everything, you know? You drop numbers, you put numbers in, you do this. Gee, why didn't we think of that before? It's so obvious, but you don't know till you live it. And maybe you're five cities in, or, you know, I've had people mad at me because certain cities weren't, certain songs weren't in a city and then they go a hate on on you. But they don't understand how it breathes also. Right, you know? of course. And then something happens in the news. I mean, it's very interesting. You know, we're coming up on the anniversary to Pulse, you know, in Orlando. Of course. And for me and, you know, for any of us who are Broadway driven, you know, we'll never forget that that happened the night before the Tonys. And so the whole culture, the whole temperature of the award show changed. And that's where Love is Love is Love was born. Right. So you can't just be locked. You've got to see what's coming in, you know. So Roz, all the love and all the stuff that, you know, you and Michael were talking about. And by the way, no back phrasing. 
No problem. <laughs> Never. There are so All many right. people who are anti back Backphrase once in a while for me, but no backphrasing. Well, I'm not putting Marilyn May on here because she's usually a measure behind. So <laughs> it's um, you know, it's a gift. What can it's I tell a you? Style. And, I know. Uh, but uh, but working with Roz was great because so many dreams came true. Like you know, you do something like she was doing all that jazz, and I was sort of hating it. This is a true story. It's true. And, uh, and I went to see her like in the condo circuit or somewhere. Where were you, Roz? Somewhere here in the Florida. Condo circuit. It was a radio station sponsored thing. In the yeah. Theater. I went and, saw it and I'm like this, oh, you know, and I'm just about to start working with her. So I tell her, you know, because I don't mince words either, you know. <laughs> No, and I, I hate it, you know. But then, you know, these things happen, and I wake up and I go, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. We make fun of it, you know what I mean? And blah, blah, blah. And talk about, you know, every time I come to New York, I see that, you know, what they don't have my phone number. Everybody's been on that show, you know what I mean? It's the right, exactly. vamp, you know, no, no, no. And of course, she went to Luigi for all those years. So I put that to work. And then I mm -hmm. gave her a little hat. And the whole thing, and she went to town, and then all of a sudden, it was like a whole different number, just because it had a point of view. Had the framework, right? Yeah, and of course, she was terrified because we come from very different skill sets. Do you know what I'm saying? But the point is, why would I mess somebody up? Do you know what I mean? Like I'm there for them to be the best. And then we had Alex Rybeck, who turned out to just be oh, the yeah, right, right guy because he has drawers full of music and songs, and he had a Burt Bacharach treasure, and so. Ross started mining deep, and then we realized, you know, everything old is new again, and we went back to the records. And, you know, Ross, tell the story, because I don't know if Billy knows this, that Cher did The Way of Love. Right. We have different lyrics for the same song. Tell that story, because when I heard Ross's album, it's clearly Cher's song, The Way of Love, yeah. but it's all new words, and it's redone. Tell the audience that, and tell Billy. I listened to The Way of Love when RCA presented it to me, and I didn't, I thought the lyrics were trite. I was a kid, oh, but really? they were trite. They weren't enough for me. What so do you mean? They, wrote, oh, wow. <laughs> they, they, wrote, they rewrote the lyrics to Can You Stop the Rain? Mm -hmm. And while I was in the studio. But it's the same they, melody. Right, the same exact melody. But while I was in the studio recording it, they suddenly changed it to Can I? And I had to, Can You? Can You? Can You is in my head. So have you heard it, Billy? It's fantastic. Have, yeah. It is yeah. Right. But it's the same yeah. melody, but th that's what was going on. So people adapted it. I'm going to give this to this singer. And I, you know, and that's what was going on in the recording business. And it's sort of fantastic. And it doesn't, you don't see songs reborn again. And Roz, we never got to put that in the show. And we have to, okay. because that's a great story. We got, we got to start working on the next tour. And I want right. I want some of the new stuff. You, you know, I played it for Alex when we were in Florida. He right. sang over Stefan's arrangements. Flip. And they both yeah, yeah, yeah. complimentary yeah. to each other. Yeah. She's been working with the same producer that did Jason's record, and the results are oh, quite great. Uh, Incredible. Right? Von Oberhoff. I mean, Jason is a miracle vocally. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. And I have oh, a theory. absolutely. I just have a theory. Tell me what you think of this, Billy. And that Roz, yeah. I don't know if we've discussed this, but when your mom was pregnant with both you and Barbara and Sheldon, like, does Sheldon sing just out of curiosity? No. Not at all. Like, doesn't <laughs> no. even have a tone. Are you sure? I'm positive. And Not even a happy birthday. I'm good. Tried. Oh, I mean, I've never asked them. Happy birthday to me on the phone and left me messages. And are they nice sounding? Do you hear a voice? They're not bad, but you know, it's not. Because you, my wouldn't, theory, you wouldn't pull them in the studio. My but theory is this, that, you know, when the baby's inside, the vibration, like the mom sang, mm -hmm. right? Barbara and, and Roz's mother sang. And a I feel lot. like the vibrations tune the ears. So when you listen to Jason, and you listen to where his ear goes, because he has very unique ears also. He hears very interesting harmonics and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's great about working with singers like this is you never know if they're going to go right or left. Yes, there's a framework, mm -hmm. but there's always a new pathway in. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's always a nice surprise, you know, because I don't like to know where I'm headed exactly always. Well, what I love about Roz, you know, people will talk about the similarity between your voice and Barbara's, and there is a timbre similarity. But what I love is you and your sister and your nephew listen to words. You connect with lyrics, and there yeah. is this phrasing that, again, I think that's not so much genetic or taught. It's osmosis. I think that you're around it's having a voice, who, having a voice, but the right. voice and a point been. of view, which most yeah. people point do not view. have. It's a three that's act true. play. A song is a three act play. Right, and I think yeah. you connect with the lyric the story, in a way the that they do. Yeah. 
Um, but it was funny at the beginning of Smile, you you and Barbara were talking, and you were the first thing I thought of was the sadness that I know it was at least Roz. I don't know about Barbara, but I know Roz. It was your you had said it was your mother's dream to see her daughter singing together on stage at some point. Mm -hmm. And did she and never just, sing did, together? Did she ever hear us sing together? I don't know. Maybe, maybe when we were kids and Barbara taught me how to harmonize and row, oh, row, that's row, row, whatever. Oh, so yeah. having so it was a time when when Barbara had left home and we were visiting her in Manhattan in her little apartment. She had a reel to reel, mm -hmm. and we were singing, Mom, Barbara, and I. And I was a kid. I mean, I was okay. in Hebrew school. So, um, uh, we played the, the, and they did a comparison of mother and daughter voices between my oh, mother wow. and my sister. Oh. We on the piano, me. Uh, I sang songs from school like uh, Zoom Golly 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 Zoom Golly Golly, or you know. Or, uh, <laughs> Where is that I tape? Who's got it? Yeah, I think my sister has it somewhere in the archives. Richard, go in the basement. No, I'll, I'll find out in Iron Mountain. I'll find out uh, from. Then my, and then I think, don't don't throw bouquets at me. And my sister was going la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, we played part of your mother in the tour, that's right? What, that's right. what I was getting to, right. is that she yeah. was kind of part of this and see, that and that's beautiful. what I love. And I remember in rehearsal, I remember Barbara's pride explaining to me, you know, because that's when you sort of do all your homework and you're talking and you're communicating or watching all the black and white footage of Swan Lake, you know, filming. You're like, oh, God, I, that I, footage I've seen great. so much stuff, you know? And uh, but to get the backstory authentically, you know, free form with no dialogue format is pretty amazing. But your mother, there was that movie that Jason made. Yes. He it's made a movie with Elliot yeah. and your mom. Yes. Yeah. And also your mom taking you to record your song in the studio. And I remember, and she was she was a little rough around the edges. <laughs> she was a little. She was a little. <laughs> she probably said no back phrasing too. <laughs> Do you think Roz think as the young that one wasn't Jason? That one was a film my brother put together. No, I know oh, two different things. I jumped, right, I jumped right. from one film to the other. It's just that oh. I got to watch all that stuff during right. the, right. that's when it was the Brooklyn people talking about her. Oh and, yeah, right. Yeah. That, you know, because we were analyzing neighborhood stuff. stuff. So I got I get to see everything, and then we sit there, and Barbara and I create, you know, just the narrative of how we're going to put it together and stuff like that. And it's interesting, but the stories are so fantastical. And you know, you guys grew up in a time, you know, like even listening to you say today, you know, my mother and I went to visit her in Manhattan. It's like Oz, uh -huh. right? Well, sure. Oz. Sure. It was unattainable, or yeah. you know, my daughter, you know, living alone in Manhattan. It's Sleeping just, on sofas in millions of offices. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's small beginning, but yeah, then she was living over Oscar's, the fish restaurant. Right. Yeah. And yet those yeah. are the then things you the do. Park West when she was with yeah. Elliot. Yeah. But, you know, the fact that Roz played the plaza, or Roz, did you play the Playboy Club? I can't remember. I did. I played yeah. the Playboy it's Club. Like, I was just a little too late. You know, I was a little too Me young. Too. Right. To be in New York because I, you know, I'm 10 years behind everybody just in the movement. But you know, I used to travel through After Dark magazine, all oh. those glamorous ads and the bushes and Linda Gerard. And you know, and so by the time I came, I was I knew everything, you know what I mean? But to have played those places, what was the room called at the plaza? The Persian uh, room. When I played it, it was called Laney's Room. Oh no, the Playboy Club was Laney's, the Persian room. Persian oh, the Persian room. room. Oh, that's the that's what it was called, the Persian room. Right. right. The yeah. Persian room. I mean, it's Why do so I know glamorous. This? It makes me want to go put my pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, don't you dare. Richard, I love you. We, I could talk to you forever, but I gotta oh, wrap up. So sweet. I wanted to be oh, a surprise for Rosie, but I love Michael Musto. I'm such a fan. I've known him my whole life and oh, career. And I've seen him thinking the last time I saw him. I think it was when we all went to see Michael Yuri and Torch Song Trilogy, and we all went to West oh, Bank sure. Cafe for steaks and dark alcohol, and, and we got <laughs> trapped. You know what I mean? We'll have you back when Michael Yuri's on. We can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> After a show and everything, we always let our hair down. Well, that's yeah. the thing. And I think also with the, with this group, you all know each other. There is a love. And whether you're in the same business, like if one's a performer, one's a director, one's a writer, you're all from the, it, part of the same thing. We also get to see the world in a very unique way. Like for oh. me, one of the highlights of my entire adult life will be Roz when we were all in Amsterdam. Uh-huh. 
So we got to go to Anne Frank's house with nobody else there. Wow. Right? And we actually got to go up. And the Rex Museum also. Yeah, in the attic. We got to go up in the attic. Up, you know, the people don't get to go up the ladder. So yeah. if you've read those diaries, and of course Barbara loves them so much, and it's the first place she ever saw. It's that thing about, you know, opening the window and smelling and like we were in that room. Remember, Roz, we had a flashlight and we were reading out of the out of the diaries and everybody was holding hands. That was very, very exciting. Or going to the museum, you know, right. that was close. So you get to see You're you so know, lucky. We and world. we are. We are but all so lucky. Listen, I I feel that. I feel very privileged yeah. and I feel very grateful because um you know we see things in a very special way but we've seen the world together but you know we've also gotten messed up together too <laughs> well why, why not <laughs> after hours amsterdam us going through the streets i'll never forget it Rob. oh my god you took, you took jason and i out to the red should we go in should we go in should we not go in should we go in? Oh my God! What if somebody finds out? What is TMZ over here? Like what? I think if of the three of you, I think Roz was the first one to go in, and Jason was the most nervous. Am I right? No, no, no. 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 Listen, Our if Barbara's Barbara's an adventurer too. We love a good adventure. Oh. <laughs> we love a good adventure, and we all love to eat. Oh, well, that's yeah. true. We've eaten our way across the globe, and um, uh, so it's uh, it's. And Barbara just had a birthday. Obviously. Yeah, she did. We zoomed Barbara. it. We did a Zoom birthday. Oh, did we you? did a Zoom birthday? Yeah, yeah. And today we all, you know, um, uh, sis oh, Carmen sis, no, I, I heard that yesterday. I know. Yeah. And I woke up to all of that, and of course yeah. they were best friends. And right. I wrote to Barbara Can because, you? Um, uh, you know, so many years have passed. But when I was in Amadeus as an actor. Uh, Amy Irving came to the show one night and she goes, oh, I turned down some Jewish thing today from Barbara Streisand. I go, what Jewish thing? And she goes, something called Yentl. I go, Yentl, the yeshiva boy, the play by Isaac Bezier, the singer. I said, are you nuts? I said, you go read for that. And she did and blah, blah. Anyway, Barbara and Sis came to see Amadeus. I was an actor then and Amy and I were, we were becoming very, very good friends. Um, and, uh, and Sis and Barbara took Amy and I to Orso for dinner. And of course, you know, I was, frozen you know like i don't think i did a peep but of course i knew sis from all the great films she had uh, cast and yeah. then also she was in a partnership with your sister now but um mm -hmm. it's so sad i mean listen she lived a long life that's yeah. not the point but it makes it even that's harder my mom passed 93 yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, and you can say they had a good run, but like when my parents passed away in their 90s, you know, I say, you don't understand. It makes it worse because I had them longer. So no two people grieve the same. But when I read that today, it would knock yeah. my breath out a little bit because they had a sisterhood, not just a friendship. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. they, they went way back. I think they met in, a, in an acting workshop. Or a, they did. That's oh, absolutely yeah. right. And they did, uh, they did right. Yeah. something called the Greek tragedy in an off-Broadway theater that they were both in or something. I'm, I'm, I was a little kid. I was like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even with wholesale. But you I obviously admired your sister and you were taking notes and just, you know, <laughs> because you 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 need, like you see something moving forward and you it's like people say, I never saw myself on television. Once you see something, once you get bit by mm -hmm. the bug, that's the greatest I'm, thing. I'm, I'm having my sister who accomplish that made me gave me confidence that I could get what I would love to do. Being a best teacher, and I these days it. everybody goes, Do you have any advice? You know, there's no easy way and with YouTube and contacts and the whole thing. But the point is this I always say no, I have no advice, you know, because oh my grandchild's so talented. Not so much, but I'm not getting into that conversation. But the <laughs> real issue, the real issue is if they want it, you know willing to do that. Nothing's going to stop them, but nobody's given away anything. And yeah. you know, back when I went into the business, Roz, which was even just a little later than you, is there were hundreds of us. Now there's thousands, yeah. if not hundreds of thousands. I don't know if I would have a career today if I came into the business. I don't know. No, right. I you know, it's very hard. It's not an easy road, unless no. you. I mean, the thing that got easier for some people were the fact that uh, like Idol or whatever, they, they put people on TV already, they found people. They almost, the ones that got through it got a big break, which they we, we had- then they have to follow it up. Yeah, but name me some winners with recording contracts, you know, right, exactly. with Kelly Clarkson, you know? Look right. at Justin Guarini, how much we all loved him. I'm thrilled that he works in the theater and I think he's talented. Right. But the things, it doesn't happen like before. Yeah. And that's why yeah. these, 
you know, uh, I always say that Barbara is Broadway's greatest export. There will never be another career like that with those mm -hmm. kind of achievements. Well, that's true. But to know this family together is a remarkable um, thing. And we've all had many, many joyous occasions. Do you know what I mean? And I love Jim and I love Marty and I love all wow. these people. And, you know, I've been part of it like for 20 years now, even though sure. we met in 93 officially. Um, but it's uh, it's just remarkable. And, and you don't pinch yourself. What you have to do is you have to be present, consistent, and deliver. You know what I'm saying? And that's all that matters. You know, I don't want to be anybody's best friend. I want to be effective. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's it's a gift to work with such talented people. And I'm very grateful. Well, Richard, thank you for joining us. We love you. We really I'm very happy. You. Thank you for on. having me. Please. Now, I'm, I'm going to go put my pants on and walk the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Richard. Right. Richard I love you, Alexander. Thank you, guys. Rosalind, okay, so there's, well, there you go. I think that's all the surprises we have. Oh, wait, no, there's Barbara. No, she's not. <laughs> but, because I'd have to paint everything white. No, I can't do it. <laughs> but, no, I, there's something that um, I didn't talk to you about, and I guess I did not know this, but uh, you were very close to one of my heroes, and that's Randy Stone. Oh, we're very close. I was married to Randy. You were married to Randy Stone. Now, for people who don't know, Randy Stone was a casting director. He was a producer. He had produced the short film, which was Trevor, which spawned yeah. the Trevor Project, which right. is an organization that I know we both um, support and honor, which helps not just gay, but suicide yeah. prevention. Yeah. And... Um, but you and and Randy was ultimately a gay man, but you were married to him. I, I, you know, he didn't know when when I married him. He didn't know, right? And I, obviously, right. you didn't know I, either. I, I was a very sheltered person. I never had a wild life, so to me, I liked the youth. I, you know, he was Randy was seven and a half years younger than me, but you'd never know. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, you would never know it. I remember my father-in-law saying to me. He said, Randy thinks you're so perfect. I said, Dad, I'm far from perfect. I may be a few years ahead of him learning and being out there, but I'm not perfect. He was like asking me to be a less, a little less perfect. I said, I can't deny the lessons I've already had in life. I can be there for him when he crosses that bridge. But I looked at him like an equal. Really? You know, I felt as young as him because I really was not a wild person, even when I was in show business. So I, always somebody with me. I never really went, to, you know, I... I never got into the, the drinking, the drug, never. Right. You know, that wasn't my thing. And I stayed pretty um, sheltered, uh, you know, uh, when I would work. And um, I remember one incident when I was at the uh, Shoreham Hotel working the new show that we were going to bring to the plaza, um, that somebody followed us into the hotel and followed us up to the room and tried to open the door because my manager really? and wife had the room next to me and they tried to, open. we switched rooms because you know, we're not supposed to go through to me was to, to protect because I was a kid. Right, of course, yeah. And, um, and this gentleman one night followed us in after the show and tried to open the door. We, you know, we called the hotel, whatever. The next day they were fumigating his room. He had retracted that and, and left his bill to me saying oh. my, my relative. <laughs> so there are wackos out there is my point, you know. Right. Um, but um, you have but I, 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 uh, I had had um, Fran Drescher and her ex-husband Peter Mark Jacobson. Of course, you, oh, course, you know because you were on the nanny, and so we talked about you know Peter's journey of coming out and how it was hard for them to stay friends at first, and then they found their way back. How did that work for you and Randy? Oh yeah, well you know what we when we oh let me show people a picture just um, in case they don't know there you are yeah with Randy who was also very close with Jody Foster and uh, yeah that, directed that, that came later that's what he did he did Little Man Tate he uh, right. it, was, it was a guy that uh, when he was working for Alan Landsberg in casting mm -hmm. he uh, discovered uh, one of the runners there who was a writer and he was writing the script and he showed it, showed it to Randy and Randy up till the day through our getting married, he was working on this script with him. Wow. And it turned into little man Tate who then they met Jody and she got involved in everything. And um, how was your, so how was your relationship? Were you able to stay close after you divorced? We were apart for a while and Randy told me a story about um, 
he thought he saw me walking in Beverly Hills and he almost got into a car accident. Really? Yeah. But when he, there was a love, I mean, we, we always loved each other. We probably never should have been married, but you know, I was, I was actually 32 when I married Randy. He was just oh, wow. you were so young. Huh? You were so young there. But I was, I felt like I was really his age because how sheltered I had been. I didn't. Sure. You know. And, um, so, I mean, we, we, some, some things he did were young and, 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 you know, that then I, I noticed certain things in his behavior that I was questioning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, when we first got together, he had friends that said, "I've never seen you so happy." You mm -hmm. know, and I think maybe he thought this was his answer that, of the question I really wasn't aware of, because right. I took him as young and innocent, not not gay. You know, right. did and, you did you help him through that process, or did he come to it on his own? How did that he, work? He came to it on his he came to it on his own, but it, it is what inevitably broke us up. Sure. Um, and we were apart, but we came together again. It was so weird, and because we, he always, you know, he always loved me, and he, and, you know, he said to me one of the last things he wrote to me was, "I, I'm so sorry, I could never be for you what you needed me to be." That's beautiful. You know, but and, and I will say because I, I thought of him when I was doing the research for this. Yeah. I found something he had written as well. Um, an unauthorized biography of your sister had come out, and they said, yeah. you know, they regurgitate a lot of yeah. these rumors. That aren't true that About she all is the the wedding and all this stuff yeah. and um which obviously will set the record straight she was doing post-production for yentl in england and she was willing to shut it down to come to your it wedding was, and it was, it, was was you it was too much trouble. it was too much trouble i wanted her to be my maid of honor yeah and um and Randy had written something after the book came out and i just want to read it very briefly mm -hmm. um he mentions on the day of our wedding, she called every few hours to make sure everything was perfect for us. And she had assistants taking photos of us so they could be shipped to London overnight so she yeah. could see them immediately. Yeah. Imagine how the world has changed. Yeah. But uh, he said, um, when I think of Barbara, the thing that comes to mind is that every time I spent with her, she never talked about herself. She seemed so interested in every detail of my life and made me feel everything I told her fascinated her. Since I was in my early 20s, I hardly believed that what I had to say was very interesting. I do believe she went out of her way to make sure I felt accepted and cared about she was a great sister-in-law. So I think that uh, it speaks very highly of him that even years later, that was his takeaway. Yeah, and you know, and she wrote this. She would have talks with him too, because she wanted to make sure that I was in the right relationship. You know? Sure, she was protecting her baby sister, but I didn't know any of this. It was so interesting. I don't know if it's um, if people know. I don't think he gets enough credit because he was an extraordinary man. You know what? He was a great. He had a great heart. He was great to actors. He was a casting oh, really? actor, and he was wonderful to actors. Really wonderful. And I remember once going to one of uh, the showcases he did and some of the kids came up to me and said, boy, you, you're lucky. You probably get all the work you want. I said, really? You think that works for me? <laughs> that never has worked for me. Anyway. Oh, I was say, you're surrounded by people. <laughs> I mean, I did do five episodes to give me a break and they were all different roles, but that's because they liked what I did the first time. So it's like, you know, but it wasn't really where... I was favored. No, and I think, but I think with somebody like Randy, what I find fascinating is that, you know, he grew up straight or conflicted, married you, divorced, came into his own, and then gave back to help others, mm -hmm. you know, to start this suicide prevention line, right. because maybe that could have been him. Yeah. And he, he had some things in his family where he dealt with other members of his family, another member of his family. Oh, wow. So he had some hurts in that area on his emotions. Wow. It's a, it's a fast, I mean, I think there's a really fascinating story there, but since you talked about acting, we'll just bring it back up because I found <laughs> it. That you had done a pilot, which wasn't picked up with Shelley Long and, yeah. and oh, somebody who I loved Gretchen Weiler. Yeah, I love um, she was terrific. She was terrific. But this is just a little clip from what was it? Ghost of a Chance. Ghost of a Chance with Stephen okay. Eats and oh my God. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I just want people to see the timing is impeccable. I am so confused. <laughs> Let's talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. I am madly in love with two men. No offense, uh, but does one of them happen to be the man you're going to marry? <laughs> of course, Wayne. And... Tom. <laughs> Jenny, oh, let me see, how can, how can I put this? Jenny, Tom is seriously deceased. <laughs> but I can't seem to forget him. Nobody wants you to forget him. What you have to do is uh, remember him a whole lot less. <laughs> I must be feeling better. That makes sense. Good. Okay. Then let's go. All right. Oh, un momento. Do you really want this picture of Tom here when you get back? I think it's great. The timing, the chemistry, I mean, you are so wonderful in that. I loved it. You know, I lost two clothing sizes between Monday and tape day. Really? Why my adrenaline was. I really wanted to have a television series. I still would take one. I would love one. <laughs> I think, well, I remembered you from the nanny, as we mentioned, when <laughs> Fred comes up. Same DNA. Same yeah. DNA. <laughs> but um, so we have a couple more quick questions. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh uh, oh, well, here's one that's really interesting. I don't know. I love the song, What Has Love Done to Me? Can Russ what sing a bit? What Love Has Done. Okay. Love. Can Try you sing a little bit? Do you mind? 20,000 times. There's so much that I've never seen before. Taking in the colors of a brand new morning sky. Opening my heart to so much more. Love is like a light shining through the darkest night. It isn't that the world has changed, it's me. Nothing short of a miracle could have taught these eyes to see that the smallest things that a moment brings are the very special, oh God, I forgot the words. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not forgetting. The very same, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So sorry, folks. I just, That's all right, you did a lot of it. I mean, we're throwing stuff at you. It's a song by Gloria Sklarov and Michelle Weiss. And I remember you used to do uh, the Ann Hampton Calloway song. Was it perfect. Old Friend? Perfect. Oh, perfect. Yes, perfect. The perfect sunrise in the morning, the birth of golden crimson on the sea. I've walked the perfect night. You're going to put me on again? In I'm putting you on again. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when I get you to sing, I'm taking it. Well, and then also it's funny because people got to hear um, Barbara was so identified with Marilyn and um, uh, the Bergmans. Alan. Alan Bergman. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, see, I forgot her name. Um, and then we got to hear you sing the song, uh, Can You Read My Mind, right? Well, was that them too? That was Leslie Brickus. Oh, wait. What, what was the uh, song of the Bergmans? How do you keep the music playing? Yes. Yes. Which and Barbara had not that, done. I, I did that on uh, last year's Daytime Emmys with a little oh. lyric. I did the In Memoriam on the Emmys, the Daytime Emmys. Did you have a relationship with the Bergmans? We're all like, they're like extended family to us. Okay. We, we spend, the, you know, all the uh, Jewish holidays at Passover <laughs> and the High Holy Days, and we break fast on Yom Kippur. They're wonderful. They're lovely. And the daughter Julie and their granddaughter Emily. And No, it's like an extended family. What I love is that during this, um, I think that you really um, shown people again. Your I know because I have spent time with you. I remember we went to see. I don't know if you remember. We saw the revival of the boys in the band at the Coast Playhouse on oh Santa God. Monica Boulevard. Do you remember? Yes, that? I. Did and you know. had been to the original production. Yeah. Or, it so you were talking to me. It was at the coast in, in at West the coast. West yep. West yep. West yep. West. yep. Right. And um, yeah. spending time with you, what I love is that, again, you are so open. You are so 
filled with joy and love and light and you exude that and i just wanted people to see that part of you because i i think it's very special oh thank you billy thank you i, you would, know, love, I would love everybody to have that coming from inside them well, look, this is what we're doing here. We're just trying to connect with people and make their day a little brighter. So, Roz, I just want to thank you for doing this. This was so much fun. We went so long, but, you know, it's so <laughs> worth it. I could talk to you for another five hours. Oh, gosh. Well, we'll have to do it again. We we'll will. And who knows? Everybody out of the woodwork. Right. Who who knows what other surprise guests I'll come up with? Uh. It's this is your life, Rosalind. Yeah. Kahn, but... <laughs> That's exactly what it felt like. Oh, <laughs> but thank you for doing this. I love you for doing I it. Love you stay too. safe. Thank get out. Try to get some yeah. air and just uh, keep social yeah. distancing. And we will endure. It's so scary because I'm in that age bracket that it's scary. You know, they, I don't know. I think we, we would have been in a different world had somebody been in the leadership role in that you know house, you know where. Yeah, I think, well, and I if somebody had thought about it, maybe a little earlier. Early, well, I think it was thought of, but <laughs> nothing was acted upon. No, yeah, I think you're you know, absolutely and right. It's just a whole bunch of things, and I just pray that we have a leadership that comes into being that care about the people that hurt when you hurt, that can express that empathy, that have compassion, knowledge, intelligence, know what they're doing, bright, intelligent, eloquent people. And the way to do that is get out and vote November, please. That's right. Everybody get out and vote. Vote for However, November. we don't know how to vote. But huh? We don't know how we're going to vote, if it's going to no, be mail or whatever, but stand vote. Stands for you. Who's right. going to be there for you, the everyday guy? We're all everyday people. Who's going to be there for us? And if you don't yeah. vote, you have absolutely no right to complain because it's on you. We get the person, the yeah. people we deserve. And if you don't vote, that's what you deserve. So get out. Yeah, we must, everybody has to vote. Don't, I don't care if you do it by mail. You're going to hopefully yeah. make it easier this year. As long I as the so. face doesn't end the post office. Um, you know, but um, yeah, you just got to really, really stay on top of it and become involved. I was never really uh, involved in this until 2016 when I was afraid it really? happened. I left it all to my sister. There you go. I never got involved in it. But 2016 election was just too dangerous. And look what we where we are today. Look where we're at. So I hope- We're, we're at home. We're, we're hugging via uh, the computer. Yeah. But and I just pray that God helps us all, comes to our hearts and we elect who will be there for you, honestly. Who will right. make it better for the people and for the country and save the earth and for the children and the children's the children. Because it's not for us. For the We're be fine. God gave us dominion over the animals and over the earth. We're supposed to be taking care of it, not destroying it. Right. Dominion right. doesn't mean taking it down. It means right. embracing it and looking out for exactly. it. Exactly. Roz, where can people go? The website is roslyn, R-O-S-L-Y-N, kind.com. Correct. And on Facebook. Facebook. And yep, she has a fan yeah. page. Yeah, my fan page at uh, Facebook. and There are songs on YouTube. Please go check them yeah. out. I mean, the song's here too. But. Yes, and go here. They're, <laughs> they're digitally across the boards released. The two. And yeah. you're still yeah. recording music, which I love. And you're still releasing music, which is what we need. Working at it. Working at it. I know. Thank, Thank you, you so Roz. much. God bless you, Rosie. Same to you, Billy. Goodbye, everybody. Love less, one and all. Be safe. Be safe. Stay well. <laughs> Love you. Bye, sweetheart. Thank you all for watching. I know I keep going long, people. Um, we will be back on Tuesday. We're here every Tuesday and Thursday, 3 p.m. till whenever. Um, take care of yourselves. Have a good weekend. Please be kind, be safe, and uh, God bless. Bye-bye. Oh, wait. Hold on. I can't say goodbye because I don't have my music. Hold on. Okay. Bye.